Okay, so we can open our meeting. Um, I guess the chairman would thank you. Would officially open. Do the chairman. I know, so I don't know the journey. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> I go. Just date and time. Alrighty. Yeah. Today is uh, November 30th. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, and we're approving the minutes of the prior meeting. Um, I actually will. don't have the minutes for you today, so we can skip that one. Sorry. Um, issues of discussion and preparation of classification hearing schedule with the select board on 12 6 2022. Correct. So we have for everyone a copy of the guest. Introduction that uh, yeah, I was reading this over that we'll be doing. Um, and I, I haven't been to one here yet, but my understanding is that the chair uh, of the board reads it to the select board, um, and we will go into the presentation of the options we'll have on the table. Um, Ellicor just got unlocked and they made the changes and they match what uh, DOR rep expects them to be. So, oh, good but, but I didn't click submit <laughs> okay. until this is done because I want to like check it 18 times, but I have a new, a new version here. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and um, put some numbers into this spreadsheet that we print out that has all the different options on what the board can select as far as the tax rate shift. Mm -hmm. um, Generally, I'm going to guess that medium similar to most. Um, the chair's introduction is probably the most amount of interaction you have to do. So, I'm generally, go through yeah. this pretty well. Yeah. You know it, read it. Yeah, you can you can read it, or you can memorize it, I suppose. But um, you can read it, and um, generally, that's all you have to do in the in the hearing. Um, for the most part, if there are any questions, it would be directed to me and to Dave. That's typically how it goes. Um, yeah. The meetings. By the way, I don't ask me. Well, <laughs> they, they, you'll be fine. They typically <laughs> don't. They typically don't because they recognize that you're elected and you're not here every day. And so, sure. um, and my purpose in life, at least in Needham, is to represent you in, in effect, so yeah. to answer those questions for you. So, um, they. Choices as far as the tax shift and so forth, they will have already seen it. Traditionally, they don't make any changes to that. They're at the maximum shift, as you have noted, the business owner in town. Um, and they may ask uh, what the board's recommendation is. And um, unless you feel passionate that it should stay exactly the same with the shift, you can certainly uh, say that we're here to offer you guidance. but. Uh, uh, that, that is the prerogative. Yeah, my answer to that question, I'm not again, I'm not, I don't know how you do it here. My answer to that question is that our, our purpose of that meeting is to present the information, but it's up to the select board to make the decision. So generally, we don't make any comment on what should be done okay. because that's what that's what they're there for. So again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you are. And, and and well, we have basically three new members. Uh, on, on the board, uh, two have not been to the tax classification hearing, not as a board member, at least. And the, uh, and the uh, third member um, just started office when there was a tax classification, so it was all new. So there could be more questions just because it's new to them, just as it's new to to you and and. Uh, the same thing for Melissa is new. Um, the Needham way is new uh, to her. So, uh, so usually they they tend to be short, ten minutes. Well, I was here last year. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and they, they tend to be short, but it could be a little longer just because it's new to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I actually you do have a Fifth Amendment right, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I have a, I have a joke about that. I never get in trouble by shutting up. So <laughs> <laughs> just because they ask a question doesn't mean I'm going to answer. Um, I have a link to a video of last year's meeting if you wanted to email it to you just to, so you can see this it. one. Um, the one the here. Last one from last, last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 During the day. Right now, and and not hearing last most of what was said. I don't know if I logged in or if I was there. Walter did the talking or some yeah. talking. I think he read. Yes, well, he, he, he read the script. Yeah. Uh, and not uh, well, Walter, but uh, Stan. 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 We basically took a lot of the format and so forth that's been done last year and should work a lot on this, but I thought that you might want to consider putting some words of kindness about Chip's tenure that he was leaving and you know, so forth. So we can revise it if you feel that um, is appropriate to do. Okay. That's all right. I'd like to do that. Okay. After two years of trying to leave. <laughs> we finally, yeah, finally pushed him out. So, yeah. Couldn't get him loose. <laughs> he is still here, so I don't know if that is even that even counts yet. He's still here. <laughs> uh, I talked to him twenty minutes ago. <laughs> he's just some in basically get you through this time. Wow. Yeah. It's it's been, I saw I saw he he popped up on Facebook as someone I know like with a picture next to the other I wanted to be high and it's just picture that he's like Oh yes, I mean he's uh, after this he'll be fine. After the tax uh recap is approved. And uh, the other thing we were talking about was logging in, right? So it's been a good time. Maybe. Oh sure. And that's that was next thing, that's the next thing I wanted to do is uh, to show you where we're gonna need to go. Um so on the on this page, it shows you which tab that you're going to need to go to. And on the back page is the tab with the forms. As far as I can tell, those one, two, three, four, five are the ones that you're going to need to sign. Yeah. So each of those needs a signature. Yeah. Uh, the A one with will the, not. Um, we don't do off separate seats, so you want okay, to so do that. Okay. So we're starting at the levy yeah. limit and down, right? Correct. Okay. Good morning. Hey. We're talking about you. Are your ears burning? Yes. <laughs> so what we would they're just being recorded, so we don't want to say anything after I'm not gonna say that's <laughs> what I want. Now I'm expecting that we would sign this immediately after the hearing, is that so? Right? Or uh, yes. Yes. Right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we can leave that room and go to the office and just sit down and do the notes. Yes, most everything else is done, and I expect that all, all the other forms will be completed. Yeah, and you can actually, um, at that point, you can sign the meeting before they're submitted. So even if you have some other signature to get or whatever, mm -hmm. you, can, you can sign at that point. So I would hope that we could leave the hearing and come right over to the office. And have you each log in and do whatever we're going to do. Okay. So we could do it together and make sure there's no issue. The LA5 is the only one that would be problematic. I mean, that's the uh, certification of excess levy capacity, which we won't know until everything's been in. True. And I think on their portion, the part that they signed says the, that they attest that the meeting happened on such and such date. And that this is what the okay. shift was. Yeah, so Teddy that, signs on Teddy signs on. Yeah, I think to that extent they could go ahead and sign at that point and be done, and then we could still do what we have to do okay. and then submit later. I'm a little of all this, I'm always concerned about getting everybody's signature because we have to have it. I mean, we can't move forward until it's done. And so I, I sound a little I'll bring my laptop to this and then whatever we can do yeah. around and do one. Yeah, and it just time. it just takes seconds to do this. So after so that, that was topics not reasonable. 
reasonably okay. anticipated within 48 hours? Uh, well, no. we're still on two. Right? Yeah, we're still on two. Sorry, yeah. So I don't know if there's anything else, but we should. We're just talking about the classification. Yeah. Um, you understand the, the notes that I sent you, and you're you're all good to go with that. Yeah, more or less. I'm going to just read it. And... Okay, yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I think uh, I think we're pretty well set. This is the the draft of this packet that everybody, the selectmen, are going to get. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if there anybody else who might want it, I will. When it's finished, I will um, send you guys a packet just so you have it. Or I'll print them out and you can grab them when you come in. That goes out to the board on Friday. Friday, yeah. And it's also available online. Yeah. I think you've seen it before. It's the basically just charts and graphs of you know what we've done over the years: the calculation of the tax rate, the calculation of the growth, mm -hmm. and uh, a table that shows the difference. The percentage increase or decrease in taxes residential from last year to this year, the actual tax dollars, um, and the percentage, which is um, generally the things that uh, are of interest. The thing that the select board is voting on is the estimated residential factor, which is the whole purpose of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. Prior boards have basically wanted to go right to that number and have their vote to anticipate. I was explaining with basically three people on the board that are new, two that hadn't been to the process, and one that was new to the board when yeah. the process last year. It could be more questions than in prior years. Okay, that's what I, I had more or less about. That I don't know um, exactly yeah. what type of questions the newer members are going to have. But uh, they would be directed to Melissa anyway, rather than no, uh, because I'm assuming it's going to be nuts and bolts stuff. But you know, over the course of so many years, you know, one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, is the commercial percentage going to go? You know, it's usually 12 or 13. Is it? What would it take to bump that up? In other words, you know, the question is, you know, will a commercial ever be contributing more? To the, to the town coffers and the the my standard answer been only if you know if they build a football stadium over um in the industrial park you know you have to have a huge number because we're talking about 11 billion dollars and to move the percentage of what's commercial and what's residential you've got to have a, a, a billion dollar building you know go up to really sh shift anything towards you know commercial so I'm like, <laughs> yes, it is fairly unlikely. Um, skyscraper possibly, but football stadium is generally, yeah. you know, what would uh, what would move the uh, move the dial a little bit toward commercial. So it's things are pretty stable, and they've been stable as you you know if you if you look at some of these charts. Wolfrich's proposal is close to the skyscraper. Pardon me. <laughs> Wolfrich's proposal is being totally close to it. Well, well, if they had if they had gotten EDH2, the full would have been 80 stories. We well, need, no, but it would have been. No, I used to say skyscraper like that. Not, yeah, no, um, it's, it's like a half. Well, it's like a half million square feet. So, yeah, it had but, the other part of even it, if like it's, a, you know, if it's a hundred million dollar building, that's, that's not going to move eleven billion dollars worth of uh, you know, residential commercial. You know, it might move it two tenths of a percent, but it's the, the football stadium that we're holding out for. Because that's a that's a billion for sure. So yeah. the uh, and the history of that is before the tax rate was being split, the commercial sector used to pay like twenty four percent of the levy, mm -hmm. and that was the factor that they looked at as they were shifting mm -hmm. because that tax is commercial they didn't pay at that level. But it's not so much that uh, I mean certainly there's been a loss of industry and that's been true to the whole northeast. But it's more that the residential values have gone up so high mm -hmm. over the years that it just the, the commercial valuations are just never ever going to be back to that level. Yeah, I mean, you replace four hundred thousand dollar homes with you know two million dollar homes. Yeah, and there's been a lot of them. 
Yeah. And you know, there just hasn't been that much going on. And I think for next year with things market cooling a little bit. It's hard to tell. I mean, I thought we were gonna get the commercial was gonna go in the toilet last year with you know all the COVID stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, and there were lose renters all over the place and not be able to collect their rents. But you know, in going through the analysis the last time, it was amazing that uh, you know what they wrote on their income and expense reports to us were, you know, using COVID concessions, yeah. you know, lost 20% uh, of our tenants. Yeah. There might have been five of them. Yeah. You know, I was expecting dozens, but it uh, very little seems to affect it. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's been an effect over the last 10 or 15 years old over what used to be the industrial park is gone from warehouses to trip advisors. Mm -hmm. So that has bumped the commercial value up and the residential has kept pace. And where the trip advisors go? What? And where trip advisors go? Yeah, I don't know. The building's still there. I don't know where the people are. But um, it, it's vacant, right? No, no, no. no, 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 no. no, no. There are people. There are people. It was vacant for a while. They were, at one point they were using it as a uh, COVID shot place. That's right. I agree on this. Okay. So you can attest to that. But, but there are people are just remote now? Well, they downsize somewhat, but yeah. yes, a lot of remote. I mean, it's an internet company. What companies can sure. work remotely yeah. to, would be there internet. Are trip advisors, but there are people building. in that building as well. Yeah. Still trip advisors, right? So, trip advisors. Oh, uh, they were out of there. Nope, they are in there. Um, and um, they are, I think they're sharing some space. I don't know if it's an official subway, no, but um, they are sharing space. That shoe, quarter, that shoe company, that they moved over to 140 Kendrick. They had that huge glass building on the highway near Market Basket and Walton, Clark's. Okay, I know you're talking about, yeah. So they were buying a bunch of food, and I, I said, What company are you placing these big orders every single day? And From you? From me. And then they're like, Oh, we're from Clark's Shoes. We just moved to 140 Kendrick because the PPC used to be. And there's other companies there that yeah. they took over a suite or whatever. Or that whole section, but um, yeah, that was there was a big spot there were in the vault, and that was huge. yeah, but um, they were getting a, a pretty good break because they, I mean, the rent over there was ridiculously low, you know, when uh, but now that they started to bring in new tenants, the rent was sure, you know, back to normal market, yeah. getting into normal market stuff. But they, they had a sweetheart deal mm -hmm. when they um, they were. Leasing it. Is Don going to be an actor? Yeah. Yeah. I got right in. Yeah. Like that. So I just need this available. Yes. Once you get the green light, the, the sign. Is that the right page? It is. It just has to click. I just want to make sure because you can come up on the education page, which has none of these. Come on the tax rate and it shows. Yep. Oh, I can log in. You got any password? You see, you want to make sure I can get to this page. That's what flip it all, flip the thing over. That's the first thing you should see. All right, I'll make sure that you today. click on the tax rate tab, and the second page is what you'll see. All right, I'll make sure on the tax rate tab. I have all the highlighted uh, tabs available. Yeah, yeah, it's once you hit the tax rate tab, that's what shows up. But there are, I know you guys have been in for educational reasons, yeah, and that's a whole different set of options. And that may be what you see. I just all right. Were, I'll make sure you were in finishing one on one this summer, did, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I know you finished, but you were in. That was the last thing you were into. Correct. So I, I just want to see where you land. Where okay. You yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, sorry. Anything else on property valuations that of interest to them? No, I they, think that's uh, all. Really, we've been focusing on getting all this stuff done, and we're there. <laughs> so, the one more form that's going to need to be reapproved, but everything's been working out pretty well, and we've got we've gotten. And we've moved along. So. If you get assaulted in the supermarket, the the answer is basically the values are definitely going up for good reason, but the tax rate is coming down as well. Yes. And sort of a wash to the number? Or? I don't know if it's a wash, but um, 
You know, it, as you look at that report, you see the land values went up fairly dramatically all of a sudden. And that creates going down because the values are going up. The values are going up. Um, okay, this higher way. But I think, yeah, so. Oh, um, I see. Okay, yeah. You know, the values are going to go up because the land values have been increased. The building values have been increased because labor and materials, yeah. you know, is is up. But does that mean that if you happen to have a bigger piece of property, you're affecting more than people? No, because the, you got to remember that all the properties are divided into prime lots and residual lots. It doesn't matter. It's the residual, the resid it's your ten, first 10,000 square feet or your first acre that is going to get hit with the value. And everybody who's got you know, a 10,000 square foot lot in the same neighborhood got, for example, a 10% increase. Um, you know, in another neighborhood, it might be 9%. Another neighborhood, it might be 16 based on the sales activity and tear down activity. So it's even if it's a neighborhood, it's mostly 10, 10 per acre lots and someone has. No, no, it's their 10,000 square 10, foot lot. That's it's a quarter acre lot. Uh, 10,000 square foot lot, but someone in that neighborhood has 40,000 square foot lots. It's, it's residual land and not a second billable parcel. Um, those residual so values stay the, the same, stay the same now because it's the prime lot you have to have to build on. So if you've got 10,001 square feet um, or, or 40,000 square feet, the difference is not going to be proportional right. because the residual land is, is valued at a much, much lower rate. Is it these values all come from sales. If you look at how people view a purchase, uh, you know, if they have a standard lot, they'll pay what everybody else is paying. If it's if it's a little bigger, they're not going to want to pay more. If it's a lot bigger, the, you know, the, the, the value of it tends to stay stable until you get to the part where maybe you could subdivide it, then it jumps up and then it stays level again. And so most people are not willing to pay more money for more land that they can't really do much with. Or at least small amount. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a you know, place to put the swing set and grass to mow. You know, so it's really it is beyond what a typical family would have, they really don't. And then they most people look at it as more to maintain, more to cut, more to, you know, so it, it does there's no huge value there. Um, but just to to jump off what you had mentioned earlier that. The thing that we all need to keep reminding ourselves is that the, the amount that you, that a taxpayer pays is based on what the budget is. And so as and, and all the calculations we do, if you think about we're starting the year doing valuations, well, the finance department starting the year doing the budget. And so at this time of year, we come together and we say, we need X dollars, we need to raise X dollars, We've got X dollars in value. We divide the two, you come up with the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So as the value of property goes up, the tax rate would go down because that that budget amount is is fixed or right. used for that particular year. So depending on what happens with values, the rate's going to ask that because we're really trying to get to that that total budget. Yeah. So is it a wash? Sort of. You really need to look at what. What the increase in budget is this year or the last year? That okay. Tell you really what the difference is. Okay. But there's a, there's a big misconception with people that if the tax if the value of property goes up, that the taxes are going to go up. That's what I thought. That is not the case. The taxes are solely based on what the budget is. Okay. And well, our job with assessing is to apportion it, just to give everybody their share. Yeah. Because your share doesn't change. It's really just the value and the rate, yeah. Overall, yeah. That. This so, will give you an example. If you look at the upper left corner there, yeah. Um, on the left hand side, you'll see increase over FY22. Go to the left hand side of that blue box. That commercial is on the right. That's kind of a generic example. I'll show you. Okay, here's the average valuation. Mm -hmm. That's the change in value over the prior year for the average. Mm -hmm. you know, the last year was like a million. Mm -hmm. This is the tax rate, proposed tax rate. These are the total taxes paid. 
on the on the average house, mm -hmm. and that's the increase. Okay. Okay. So that's in this this is going to be listed. You'll have a copy. It's going to be listed for every year. All right. Yeah, so it never really goes down much, but uh, it doesn't go up proportionally to the value of this. Okay. So it's not a wash. Mm -hmm. Can I steal that back? I'll send you. Yeah. Back. So I think we've pretty much covered the hearing and what we have to do around it. Are there any other questions? Or... General update and scheduling. Yes, if I may. Sure. Um, the chair of the select board would like to meet with the board. Um, and, and I'm thinking probably January would be a good time, probably January. The League of Women voted conducted a study of town and government and different boards in town and they came to the select board several months ago with some recommendations of uh, suggesting that some boards maybe should be appointed versus elected. And the Board of Assessors is one of those boards that they identified. So um, the, uh, the board is looking into those options, but they want to meet with the boards and get feedback from the board members and their thoughts. Uh, relative to uh, whether appointed or elected, and appointed would be go through a hiring process. Uh, uh, appointed would be uh, <laughs> the select board. Uh, there are a number of committees that the select board appoints people to. You know, just like any advertise they have openings, you can commit, mm -hmm. they interview, and then they appoint. It's still non compensated, still volunteer. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in the case of the Board of Assessors, you would still have all the same responsibilities. You still need to take the same courses. Mm -hmm. the, the Department of Revenue, you still need to maintain your uh, certification. The change would be that uh, rather than um, filling each uh, position by the ballot box, it would be by uh, the select board voting to appoint. And, um, but it would still be staggered. It would, in the case of the board of assessors, only one member would be up for the appointment every three years. So, uh, with that, the chair would like to come in and meet with the process. <laughs> We'd like to come in and meet with the board. And as I said, I think maybe um, early January, there are two reasons uh, that I suggest that. One, um, and it's past the holidays. We kind of squeeze in the meeting in December. So I have, I have a trial that starts January 4th. Okay, and you're prepping before January 4th. Um, I could probably work around that easier before that. Like do it January 3rd. January 3rd? If it's, if it's early like this. Yes, uh, I was thinking I can't, I can't do this before the 4th. Oh, I understand. Um, is there school on there? Is Thursday, yeah, school resumes on the third. The Tuesday, the oh. third. Monday, Tuesday, the first. Thing. Morning. Tuesday morning, it's thing for me. Okay. Um, Monday morning works. Tuesday afternoon works. Um, is Monday the holiday? Monday is the holiday because yeah. it's a fall on Sunday. Yeah, that's okay. Eric, when do you think your trial should be scheduled to wrap up? I, 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 I think, think, I think the... You said the board. I, I would look, look towards the end of the week on like the 27th. Okay, so perhaps the last week of January? But the 30th itself, no, I'm traveling, but the, like the 26th, 27th, that Thursday, Friday. Okay. January 27th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a Friday, right? So the 26th or 27th. Twenty-six or twenty Thursday the twenty-six or Friday. Thursdays Fridays the twelfth. Thursday the twenty-six works. Okay. And that would be good for you as well. Absolutely good. Okay. And um question afternoon or morning? Morning for me. Eric? Yeah. Okay. So well, that, and the reason I was saying is get past the December holidays and the new years. Any other thing that I think that would be a prime time that Melissa can give you an update of what the abatement activity is looking like for that part of that January. So we're going to do a session meeting on the 26th. Yep. Uh, uh, if, I'll say nine, if it's uh, very usually, 
um, probably early in the morning to drop off. No, right. I'll make arrangements for that day. Okay. Do something. So um, just let me earlier the better. Okay. So um, would 8 a.m. Uh, as early as 8 a.m. work for you, Artie? I can do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I will get back to Melissa and get, um, let you know if that works. It would be Marion Cooley that would be easy. Okay. Are they considering non resident uh, appointees or just? The residents, I think. Oh, or residents. Well, residents. I mean, a lot of towns have non resident uh, people on their board. Yeah, no, they're not looking at that. They would, uh, all the committees in town are res need a resident. Which other committees are they looking at? Uh, the trust fund commissioners, uh, which they've uh, met with. Um, and um, sorry to say, I forget what the other one is. I'll find the report from the legal women voters and I'll email it to you all. Okay. And you can see why they suggested what they suggested. And my understanding is they spoke with representatives that like the legal women voters spoke with representatives from every one of them. But of course, that could have been with uh, Stan. Well, in the it may have been Walter as well, because he would have been on the board at the time that they were doing it. Interviews. So, uh, so you'll, see, you'll see the report, you'll see uh, why they, they, the league, recommended what they did. And certainly, Mary Ann will come in with the point of view that the select board has and in order to get feedback from the members of the board. I see. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a number four opposed on the 26th, but we have nine o'clock. Eight o'clock. I was asked for the time range just because I don't know what her okay. day was scheduled. She does work as well. Should we move on to number four? And, uh, have anything else? And that's topics not reasonably anticipated within 48 hours prior to the meeting. Basically, an emergency certification yeah. that you could not have known of, which I'm not aware of. Anything. Okay. Um, Jorn, with that, we would have a motion to adjourn. So we make that motion to adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. Just a second. Oh, good. 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 Good